Hi, and welcome back to our next calculus lesson. Today we're going to be making a box out of a single sheet of paper. Now, I'm going to be referencing paper, the examples are going to be referencing cardboard, but I think that you can see that this can be made out of any flat material, and it's a really helpful thing to do, because if you're making a box, you want to figure out the largest volume that can fit inside the box. Calculus tells us how we're going to do it. And for a lot of these, we're going to be using volume formulas we already know. For instance, for our our purposes, a box is just going to be a rectangular prism, so that's length times width times height. And then we will also take a look at a cylinder later on in the week, and that's just going to be pi r squared times h. For all of these, you're just going to get the volume formula into one variable, take the derivative, find the critical points, and you're good to go. Here's what I mean about making a box out of a single sheet of paper. So this is your pretty standard 8.5 inch by 11 inch piece. A uh, piece of printer paper. What I'm going to do is cut a square out of each corner and I'm going to fold it up to make a box. And I want my square to be two inches, so I have my ruler here, so two inches and then two inches. I'm just going to measure out each one, see how it goes. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to cut out all my corners. Cool. No longer looks like a rectangle, but that's okay because we took all of these squares out of it. What we can do now is take all these and fold them up. If we unfold it all, you'll get a rectangular prism, a box. Ba -ba -da -ba. So in that example, I chose to cut out squares, each of a side length of two, and it made a box. I don't know if that box was the largest volume for that rectangular prism, or the smallest, or just some random value in between, but calculus allows me to determine what part of the square I can cut out in order to make it the largest volume. And this has a lot of real-world applications, because I can figure out if I'm a manufacturer how I can make the largest possible volume out of a single sheet of metal or a single piece of wood if I cut things out. That way I minimize my cost and I maximize the volume. So we're going to take a look at an example where we're doing just that in a real-world context. So we're going to look at a classic calculus optimization problem uh, with building a box out of a single sheet of material. So how do we optimize the volume of a box? Take a second and read this problem through. You might also want to pause the video and write it in. So it's helpful to draw a diagram with this. In fact, it's helpful to draw two. We're going to have our two-dimensional image, and then we're going to have our three-dimensional image. You don't really have to draw a diagram in for the 3D one, but it can really, really, really help out. So I guess you kind of have to. Here's our sheet. We know it's 12 by 8. We're cutting squares out of each side of it. So because we're cutting squares, and they're all going to be the same size square, this is x, that's x, that's x, 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 y. No, it's still x. Now, we now can find our measurements of it. This box is going to be x high. It has to be x high because that's the amount that we cut out of each square, and if we fold them up, it becomes x. Now, what's going to be left on this side, the shorter of the two sides, it's going to be 8 minus 2x. The reason it's 2x is because if we took this whole side to be 8, well, we're cutting away this x from the 8 and also that x, so it's just 8 minus 2x. Same reason this is going to be 12 minus 2x, because if we take this entire side to be 12, well, I'm taking away this x and this x from it, so it's just 12 minus 2x. How does that help us? Well, with our optimization problems, we know that we need to have volume in terms of one variable. So here, volume is just base times width times height, so it's going to be 8 minus 2x, 12 minus 2x, and x. And with a bit of algebra, that's going to factor out to 4x to the third minus 40x squared plus 96x. And that's going to be our volume. Now notice this is just in one variable, 
So we don't need to worry about anything else. It's just one variable, so we can do our optimization problem. Well, that means I need to find the first derivative, so that's just going to be 12x squared minus 80x plus 96. I set this equal to 0, I solve, and I'm able to find my answer. Now, I'm not going to bore you with setting an equal to 0 for two reasons. One, you can do the quadratic formula. It gives a really unsatisfying answer, but it is your answer. Two, you're online and you can plug it into a million quadratic equations to solve for. Just Google quadratic equation solver and you're good to go. You're going to get that x is equal to 1.5694. Again, I said they were unsatisfying answers. And x is equal to 5.0971. I could have said I did in my head and really shocked you all, but I didn't. Now, one of these is a totally reasonable answer. The other is not. And it might be a bit annoying to look at them and say which one is and which one isn't. However, if we look up here, one of our sides is 8 minus 2x. Well, this is about 1 and a half, so if this side, if we plugged in 8 minus 2, 1.5, just for the heck of it, to make it easy, well, that's going to be 8 minus 3, that's 5. That totally works, or positive, it would mean our box has a width of 5 inches. However, Suppose I try the second one. I'm going to have 8 minus 10. That's negative 2. This can't possibly work. The reason it can't possibly work is that means that our box, which is a real-world object and needs all positive values, would have a negative length. Can't possibly work there. Sorry, I didn't realize it was cut off. Just moved it up. So here, our answer would be x is equal to 5. So the maximum value of such a box would happen when the square we come out, oh, excuse me, x is equal to 1.5694, blah, 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 blah. If x is equal to this, if we cut out the volume using squares, each one 1.5694, blah, 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 inches, we'll be able to have the maximum volume of the box. Okay, so we just saw an example of how to do it. It followed through with the same calc principles which we were discussing in our last lesson, and which we saw with our box. Now, you're going to give numbers 7 and 11 a chance. You're going to do them in your notebook, and then you're going to take pictures of them and upload them here. That way we can just see how everything's going. Before you upload them, please check in the back of the book and see if you have the right answer. If you don't, redo it, so that way you're good to go. Now, 7 is a box problem. 11 is still an optimization problem, but it's with a right triangle, so it's going to require a bit of thinking. But I know you guys are up to the task. Okay, get to it. Hope all is well, and I'll talk to you again soon.